A few weeks ago, I played against Gotham Chess and I won a few games and I lost a few games, but he only had one minute on the clock. Today, I'm going to be playing against Gotham when he has unlimited time. And that is because I'm going to be playing against his chess AI version, the Gotham Bot. Now, the Gotham Bot is rated 2500 and well, we can see here it says International Master Levy Rossman is an IM and streaming celebrity. Do you have what it takes to defeat Gotham Chess? So we're going to see if we do. I'm going to be talking about every single move that I make so that it's very instructive for you and so that you learn and maybe you can beat yourself Gotham Chess. All right, let's do it. We're going to start with my favorite move, D4. So what is he saying about it? D4 is pretty good, not as good as 1E4, but still good. Okay, okay, we'll take that. So he's going D5 and I'm going to go for the Queen's Gambit. I'm sacrificing my pawn and he's going for the Queen's Gambit decline, which means that he's not taking my pawn. So I'm going to go Knight C3 and we're going to see what he does. I'm just developing my Knight. I'm going to go for my favorite line, the Exchange Variation. Now, the Exchange Variation means they exchange the C pawn for the D pawn and the idea of that is that black cannot take this pawn on c4 anymore, um, which allows me to move my bishop out much more freely without constantly thinking about Levy capturing my pawn on c4. So I'm going to go bishop g5. This is all theory, and I'm right now just pinning the knight. He's pinning my knight as well, and you guys are probably thinking, Anna, why don't you go queen a4 check and just win the bishop? But the thing is here that after queen a4 check, um, there's knight c6, which one blocks the check and defends the bishop. So I'm simply going to go e3 to develop. I think castles is normal. And now we're going to go bishop d3. And now my bishop is looking all the way towards h7. So he's going for c5. He immediately wants to challenge my center, which is what you want to do. I mean, I have a fantastic center. So it makes a lot of sense that he wants to go for that. And I'm thinking if I should capture or if I should just defend it. But if I defend it, then he might go c4 and b5 and it's going to get a lot of play. So I'm going to capture on c5. Ooh. Does this work? What happens now? My I just want to take it and if queen takes, there's bishop check and I'm winning the queen. Yeah, I'm I'm just going to take the pawn. He's sacrificing a pawn, but I didn't think it worked here. Okay, so I get the move. I get it. I mean, he's threatening my... What? Okay, okay. I mean, I still get it. <laughs> so he's threatening my bishop. And I cannot take the queen. Because if I take it, then, I mean, I can't because the knight is pinned. So I understand my bishop is under attack. But not only that, this pawn on g2 is under attack. I think the only move that I have is either one to go knight f3. But then there might be check and it might get a little bit uncomfortable, although there is bishop here. Or I can go takes. Is there takes then? I'm confused. I, I, I am confused. Um, I think there's queen up three. I think I can just simply take this. I don't know. This, this looks really bad to me. Like, what is going on, Levy bot? Like, what is happening? Am I just winning? No, there's no way I'm just winning. So takes and takes. Ah, and is this plan to go rook check then? I'm just trying to calculate because you have to when you're playing in someone this strong. Okay, maybe then bishop e2. No, I don't understand what is going on here. I'm going to take it. And he's going for queen here. This becoming an insanely tactical game. And when you have a position that is this tactical, it's really important to take your time. And what you want to do is that you want to calculate every single, and I've talked about this in previous videos, you want to calculate every single check, capture, and attack. So right now, I, I can see some of the checks that I have, but I don't like them. Um, I'm, I'm calculating them in my brain, but I, I don't like going for any of those checks. Now, can I, do I have any captures? I have this capture, I have this capture, but I don't like any of those captures. Do I have any attacks? Go queen h5 and I could threaten checkmate. 
I could go queen h5 and I could threaten and checkmate. Guys, this is why you always follow this rule. I mean, there's so many times in my life where I've been like, oh, like there's no point in like following this, but there's always a point. Like it's always good to do it. Actually, could this be something? I, I don't think it's good though. I don't think it works. Um, There's h6. But yeah, in, in positions that are this crazy where you don't know where to start calculating, going for the method of checks, captures, and attacks is always good. Now, when you don't like any check, capture, and attack, you need to think about, okay, what is your opponent threatening? Your, my opponent is threatening right now my rook. This is very messy, extremely messy, but I need to think, okay, I need, I need to try to calculate in, in very clear uh, and deep, like, or not deep, but in very clear variations and just try to organize my thoughts inside of my brain. So my opponent is right now threatening my rook and the characteristics of this position is that my Levis king is attacked. My rook is under attack right now. So either I checkmate the king and lose the rook or I mean, I defend the rook. So... The only way that I'm seeing right now to defend the rook is by going queen f3. Bishop e4 doesn't work due to queen takes e4 as the knight is pinned. So queen f3 right now is the only move that I'm seeing. So I think that this is the only move that makes any sense. And he's just going for takes. And he's saying you aren't attached to your queen. Well, Levy, you're not attached to your queen either. Um, So takes and takes. And now I just, I'm really surprised that my pawn up. These pawns are doubled. Um, he has a very weak king right now. I think I'm just better in this position. I also, um, he hasn't developed several of his pieces. So I definitely think I'm better in this position. I think I'm going to go for rook check just because I don't like having the knight and the rook on the same diagonal. And after rook check, what I'm going to do is that I'm just simply going to long castle. And then I'm just going to try to go for an attack towards the king. I really want to bring up a knight over here if I can. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. I could also castle here immediately, and if bishop there... Well, I guess I could do it, maybe, because maybe I don't want to go for rook check. So maybe actually this move makes more sense, because I will always have rook check if I want to. And if bishop there, I'm, I'm winning a piece. So actually, I'm just going to go for this. I think this is good. It's going bishop e6. And I mean, now my question is, what happens if I go knight e4? I mean, I'm giving up a pawn, but he's giving up a pawn. I'm also thinking what happens if I push? Maybe there'll be takes. Not sure. Well, there's a lot of different things in this position. I don't see a way for him to defend here. Maybe I could go knight here immediately. Because if check or if rook there, then I guess, or king there, I guess I do have this check. Actually, I think it makes more sense to go for this. I don't think bishop takes here is any good. So I'm going to go knight here immediately. So he's just going king h8. He's just sacrificing the pawn. Um, and now actually I'm wondering what happens if I go a3. I mean, I don't necessarily want to give up this pawn for absolutely nothing. And the bishop would have to go back. But maybe there's going to be f5 then. So maybe takes here and bishop. Maybe this. Could this be any good? I actually like going a3 first, though, I think. Um, I really do. I'm going to go a3. I don't like this bishop being there. If this move, I'll just go knight d6. And after bishop over there, now I think it's it's time, a good time for me to capture. I think this is a much better time for me to capture. So I'm going to capture this now instead. Um, he's threatening my knight. I'm looking once again at all the captures. I'm looking at captures. Um, captures, captures. I mean, I'm, I'm just two pawns up right now, right? I could be three as well if I want to, but maybe I'll be I'll be overdoing it then. Uh, but taking this also looks pretty good, to be honest. So takes and takes. I mean, this looks amazing, but I kind of prefer going for this takes because I sort of have the feeling that I don't want to overdo it with the amount of pawns that I'm taking. Although sometimes I think that way and then I just don't take all the pawns and I regret it. I'm also thinking actually about going d5, but takes and takes and takes. And, um, you know, the issue is that this, this is hanging over here. So actually, I'm considering going for this. But like I said, I might be overdoing it. Actually, after this, there might be f6 and then my knight is trapped, which would be extremely unfortunate. Another idea that I have that I'm just realizing right now is what happens if I just basically, this knight is really badly placed, the knight cannot go anywhere. What happens if I just try to place a knight on d6? Would that be good? Now, you know what? You know the move that I actually like, guys? I like taking here and centralizing my knight. Here we go. We're going to exchange. We're going to bring this knight up. This is what I like. Bishop here. I don't care. Oh, the bishop is going all the way here. Okay. 
Interesting. So I think we're going to go Rook G1. And the idea now, I mean, my Rook is almost trapped. Do you need to be a little bit careful? Uh, my Rook is almost trapped. And my idea is just to bring up these pieces. So, okay, that was a good move. I probably need to go Knight C4 threatening this so that if Bishop there, I can take there. So probably Knight C4 is now a really important move. Um, so we're going to go Knight C4, just threatening the Bishop. The Bishop goes back. And now I'm considering going Rook over here. Either this or maybe I can start pushing the pawns. Because if Rook over here, I mean, we can see, I just don't want this Bishop to get active. I'm just trying to play against my opponent's pieces. I just don't want that bishop to get active. So rook over here, there could be this, but this and this, I mean, my pawns are going to become so good. I want my pawns to be good. So I actually really like this idea of, of pushing, I think. So I think I'm going to go for this instead. If check, I don't mind. I can go king b1. He's saying watch yourself over there, but watch yourself, Gotham. Um, I think that's okay. Either that or maybe, actually maybe knight there could also be a good idea. King b1, rook here. I'm just considering like what's happening. I think my king wants to be on b1 anyway, so I think this is okay. So this, and all right, so the plan is for him that if I push, he's going to go bishop here and he's going to try to trap me, which would be obviously very unfortunate. Um, If takes this and this, this would be bad as well. So maybe I need to go bishop e4. Maybe this is not a move I want to do though. Maybe I need to go rook over here, just threatening the bishop, so that when the bishop moves, then I can defend. Because this, if takes, I think this is fine for me. I can go takes. And then after takes, I can just go takes. And, but he's going to go there. Oh, this is kind of complicated. So takes, takes, bam, bam, bam. Okay, no. There's not enough pumps. That was actually a really good move that I kind of missed. Maybe bishop e4 is the only move then. Yeah, very tricky. Okay, I'm actually not exactly sure how I'm defending this pawn. Um, I think my best option is just to go to e4. I think this is what I have to do. And then I just have to go bishop f3. I'm not happy about this because my bishop was much better in this diagonal. But it is what it is. Oh, there is this move. Oh, this is... Wow, he's finding some good moves. But maybe I just need to give up one pawn. Like, maybe I just need to be nice and just not... Not nice, but maybe I just, I just need to accept that I'm going to have to give up one pawn. So, what if I go here? You know what? We're going to go knight a5. I believe in this. Takes. I'll go takes. Takes. I'll go takes, and I'm defending. Rook over there. Then we're going to go, I'm still two pawns up. We're going to go c6. We're defending. He's going to try to take my pawn. Can he do it? Ah, this bishop is stopping me from going there. Okay, that is a little bit tricky. But I think I can go rook d1. And then if takes, takes, and takes. Check here. Is there this? Maybe there is this. Maybe this is fine. I'm actually considering sacrificing, but I don't know if sacrificing is the right choice. I don't know. I, I always feel like I want to sacrifice, and then I'm never like... I don't know if it's ever ended well, actually. It feels like it never ends well for me to sacrifice. Uh, maybe I can go rookie one. So that if takes, there's check here. Rook check. It's actually pretty interesting. And then this. Okay, so what? So I give up on a pawn. Is that the situation? I think it is. I think I'm going to have to give up on the c6 pawn, which was very pretty. Just don't want to. But I'm also trying to make this instructive. And I don't want to recommend you guys to like to play this way. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm going to go for a sacrifice. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for a sacrifice, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. I just love this pawn. I love it with all my heart. And in games or no, like engines are not always amazing at like defending um, in different end games. So I'm going to go B4. I want to go B5. I think that this is great. I, I, I mean, I think it's good at least. I think it's good. So we're going to go Knight A5. Everything is nice and defended. I want to go A4 and I want to go B5. And this is exactly what we're going to go for. We're going to go for this. Okay. Okay, he's stopping me. Levy's stopping me. Levy's stopping me a little bit, but just a tiny little bit. So what I'm going to do now is that I actually want to cut off his king. I don't want his king coming in and, and creating issues. I don't like that. Um, so one plan for us is to go for this, but I can't really do that yet. So either I move the knight around or I go something like knight here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go 
ah, if this, there might be this. So this may or may not be the issue. So maybe I just need to bring the king up, actually. If I bring the king up, there might be this. Do I mind? I do not know. So maybe I need to go rook here first, or maybe just move this around. Actually, I'm going to go knight b3. I like this move. If the rook ever goes back, then I'll go over here. Oh, this is a check. This is a check. What check am I seeing? I feel like I'm seeing a good check. I feel like I'm seeing a very good check. Okay, I'm going to go for this check. I really like this check. Is it going to go king d6? Okay, I'll take. Take, take. I mean, it's going to be a knight versus a rook, which is typically pretty bad. Um, like, Not pretty bad, but it, which is typically like... It's not always sufficient, at least. That's what I'm trying to say. Actually, I don't like that. I'm going to kick this king away. I don't want the king to be here. King is being a little bit annoying, actually. So we're going to kick it away. And my pawn is not under attack in any way. You know what? I think I just... What I need to do, guys, is that I need to bring my king up with no fear. This is it. I'll go king b3. And now he's going for this. Because I think he knows... I think he knows that if he starts picking up my pawns, he's lost, I think. Is he asking for a draw? Is Levy, is Gotham Bot asking me for a draw right now? Is that what I'm witnessing? <gasps> ah! Ooh! Ooh, I had to go to B3! Uh-oh! Uh-oh, I had to go. I, I, I got lost in the Gotham bot asking for a draw situation. I thought he wanted a draw and I got all excited. Oh, no. Oh, no. I got all excited. I got too excited. I had to go king b3 and I think it was a draw. Now this pawn is hanging, but we can still save it. Mm. So this, this. I just needed to push this. I didn't realize that. Oh, but after it takes. <gasps> I found a way, everybody. We push. Rook check is not possible. Okay, it is possible. <laughs> it is possible. Um, now I need to go king a2, I believe. But I have an idea here. I have an idea, which is that I've... Okay, so this now didn't go the way I thought it was. I thought he was going to go. I thought he was going to take. And then my plan was to push the pawn. I wanted to create another pass pawn. Okay, guys, we fight. We go king b3. This goes up. I need to go rook here now, I think. I need to go rook right over here. And I'm going to try to pick up some stuff. So, opponent is going over there. Now I only have one passed pawn. I mean, I could go rook check just to get the king a little bit more further away, which I think is good. I think this king wants to be a little bit further away. We're getting the king, you know, goodbye to you. And then we're going to pick this one up. So, takes and... T Wait, where was the king before? Yeah, okay. So this and this... And I really wish I could defend this pawn. Can I do it? Maybe. Maybe. I could go knight over here. Takes. And there would be chalk. And then I don't really know what there is. Um. <clears throat> so what else can we do? We can also. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and see. Let's try to create a little bit of magic somehow. Let's go. Let's go knight here. I want to have my knight in a pretty central spot if I can. So I'm going to go for this check because if king here, I can go for this check. And if king there, I can. I mean, I really just want to exchange a few pawns. Guys, this is now a difficult situation. The bots don't always play everything well. Maybe he'll miss a fork. Um, bots don't always play this perfectly. So it's definitely not impossible here. Now you may say, Anna, why are you not forking? Well, the thing is that after this, actually, could this be the best sh shot? I'm not sure. Or after this, there's going to be rook here. So I'm just getting pinned. Yeah, I actually think that I need to go king, king here. I think that any other move just loses. We're going to go king over here. Do you want to take it? Take it, Levy. It's a free pawn. Okay, we're going knight check. We're just going to attack my king. No dinner first. No dinner first. Okay, guys. This is a completely lost position because I'm going to be losing this pawn and then he's going to promote. There's no way my knight can save everything. So, everybody, you resign here. I'm going to go ahead and resign right here. But let's go ahead and check out what the accuracy was. So, I'm going to press analysis. I actually think it was a pretty good game. I'm actually very excited to see where it went wrong. 
So we're going to go for review. Let's see. Let's see. What was the accuracy? Okay, so Levy had an accuracy of 84.1 and I had an accuracy of 76.7. .7. So the game was really good. I was actually completely winning throughout the whole game until at this point I blundered by going king b1. This is what I thought that I had to go king b3. Um, but the issue is that there's rook d3 and I'm wondering if actually this is just a draw now. So is this what the... Oh, the engine is recommending king c3. But the idea that I sacrifice... Ah, no, of course. If takes, I can go here. Rook takes f2 and b5. I missed that for some reason after takes. When I capture the rook, my rook is not hanging. So, guys, we almost beat the Lavi bot. We were really close. It was really exciting all the way till the end. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you've ever beaten the Lavi bot. And um, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'll see you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.